Thank you for that anthem, choir. Our gospel lesson today comes from Matthew, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. So I invite you to stand as you're able, in body or in spirit, for the reading of our gospel lesson. Jesus left the place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Years ago, I was in church as a pastor, and a woman who was a member of my church came to me and wanted to talk. And she was a um, lifelong Christian, member of that church, faithful servant. She came in my office and sat down, and she said, Andy, I no longer believe in the power of prayer. In fact, I no longer believe in prayer itself. She had faced a lot of difficult days. She had a child in particular who had made some really, 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 really poor decisions. Terrible decisions. And she'd done everything right. She had the child baptized in church. Took him to VBS, Sunday school. Worshiped faithfully. Child was confirmed at age 13. She'd done everything she was supposed to. And yet their child made terrible, awful, life-destroying decisions. And she had prayed. Oh man, how she had prayed. Faithfully and religiously. She'd done everything she could do. She'd prayed every prayer she could pray. And does not the Bible say, train up a child in the way of the Lord, and they shall not depart? And yet their child had departed. So she told me, either prayer does not work, or God does not care. She wasn't sure which one it was, but that's where she was. You ever felt that way? I have. I have felt before as though my prayers are bouncing off the ceiling and never making it to God. Because that's a better option mentally and spiritually to think that they aren't making it to God as opposed to the worst thought which is to think they're making it to God and he just doesn't care. That's the harder one. I've been there with family dynamics, other things. And I think if we're going to be honest, I think every one of us at some point is going to come to that place. And if you have never come to that place, then praise God. 
that may be the greatest blessing in your life if you've never come to that place. I think we've all felt that at some point in the midst of life, in the midst of tragedy. And feeling that way does one of two things to us that are both incredibly dangerous to our soul. One is what I have just mentioned. Well, why, why pray? What's the point in it? Why does it matter? It doesn't work or he doesn't care. So what happens at that point is we then isolate ourselves from God. We then isolate ourselves from his power and from his presence. And we wander off spiritually alone. And as a wise friend told me recently, that is exactly what the devil wants. Because when we isolate ourselves from God and we no longer pray, we no longer reach out, then that puts us exactly where the devil would like for us to be. And he can play mental games with us, destroying our faith, destroying our soul. That's one thing that happens when we think prayer doesn't work. And the other is not quite as dangerous, but I think can be. And that's when we pray the weak prayer. You've prayed it. I've prayed it. I've prayed it beside the deathbed. Lord, if this be your will. Lord, if this be what you want. But I don't want to suppose and I don't want to presume and I don't want to step on your toes, Lord. So you just do whatever you want. And then I'm along for the ride, whatever you want to do. I'll just be the passive passenger on this journey, God. And we pray those prayers. I mean, isn't that what Jesus taught us to pray? Didn't he pray in the garden? Lord, take this cup from me, but not my will, but thine. Did not Jesus teach us to pray that kind of passive prayer? To let God figure it all out? And we just go along for the ride? Perhaps. But Jesus talked about prayer probably more so than anything in Scripture. And by the way, I don't think it's particularly passive to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For Jesus, those weren't just idle words. Study the life of Jesus. He had many who trespassed against him. In fact, it seems as though most of Jesus' life was full of individuals trespassing against him. And yet, what did he pray? Not a passive, hey, whatever you want to do, God. But in fact, I'm going to link my asking for forgiveness to my forgiving them. One of my favorite passages about prayer is something Jesus says in the Gospels where he tells this story of being a good neighbor and says, if someone came to your house late at night and asked for bread, would you tell them, oh, no, we're already in bed. This won't happen. He said, no, you would, you would be a good neighbor and you would do it. Pray in the same way. And then he says, if any of you has a child who asks for bread, would you in turn give that child a serpent? He says, oh, of course not. And if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, 
How much more does your perfect heavenly Father know how to give you good gifts? That verse changed my life when it comes to prayer. Because I, if it is in my power, if my children need it, and it is in my power, and it is in my ability to do for them, I will do it. All my children must do is ask. If it is mine to give, I will give it. That doesn't make me a rock star. That makes me a parent. That's how we all are. And if you who are evil or sinful, imperfect, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your perfect heavenly Father know how to give good gifts to you? That changes my prayer life. And that should change your prayer life. Think about your children. How many of your children or grandchildren or nieces or nephew have at some point asked for something ridiculous for a present? Mom, Dad, I would like a pony for a present. When the child asks for the pony, do you think the child has analyzed the monthly budget spreadsheet and seen if your monthly budget can support the feed? and the stabling of a pony? Do you think they have consulted the HOA covenants to see how it would fit in the, in the covenant? Most likely not. But you know what they did? They asked boldly for a pony or a unicorn or whatever. And they didn't think about if you could do it, or if you could afford it, or any of those things. They asked boldly, you know why? Because they felt safe and secure in your love. They asked boldly because they knew you loved them and that they loved you. Jesus says, perfect love cast out all fear. And they asked for ridiculous birthday presents because they were safe and they had no fear because they knew they were loved. Love drives out fear. Love makes us ask boldly. Today in the passage we read, we see a mom Come and ask Jesus for help. And what was the first answer she gets? Go away. Go away. You're a Canaanite. You're a Gentile. You're not one of us. We're here for the lost sheep of Israel. So please move aside. The answer is no. Now, for me, that may have been enough. I may have said, okay, I see my place. I see my role. I will move along. But uh, mamas don't work like that, do they? You've heard the expression mama bear, haven't you? So what does she do? She asks, and she asked, and she asked, and she asked, and she asked, and she asked boldly. She asked with confidence. She asked with assurance. Because even though others told us that she should move along, she knew that she too was made in the image of God. She knew that she too was loved even by Jesus. And because she knew that she was loved by Jesus, she asked boldly. She asked repeatedly. She did not quit asking until she received the healing she wanted and that she needed. 
One of my other favorite parables about prayer is the parable of the unjust judge. When this widow had a request for the judge, and Jesus says the judge feared neither God nor man, but because the widow was persistent with her ask, he granted her request. He said, you should pray in the same way. In other words, the widow bugged the judge till he got to, he said, leave me alone, take it. He said, pray in the same way. Ask boldly. Ask boldly. Ask boldly. Because you are loved. You are loved made in his image. And Christ Jesus came for you. Ask boldly because you are his. Now, understand what that means. That doesn't mean that we'll always get it exactly like we want it. C.S. Lewis said, The hardest answer to hear from God in prayer is not yes, it is not no, it is wait. Ask boldly, knowing that your prayer is heard, knowing that your prayer will be answered, knowing that a loving God hears, understands, and will answer your prayer. Just know that it may not always be the way you want. You've heard me say in Bible studies before, I'm not a big fan of what I call Christian fairy tales. You'll probably throw things at me when I tell you this, but I've never been a fan of the movie Chasing the, uh, Facing the Giants. And I'll tell you why. In that movie, he can't win a football game and she can't get pregnant. But then he gets saved. And guess what? They start winning, and she gets pregnant. Guess what? Sometimes you get saved, and you still get fired, and she still can't get pregnant. We don't pray to get our way magically. We pray to be in communion with God. So ask boldly while knowing that God is the one who grants. And he always grants and hears our prayers. Talking with my friend, the God, God laid a revelation on me in our conversation. And I told her this, I said, you know what our prayers are like? I said, our prayers are like the CIA. We only see when the CIA misses the terrorist attack. We don't see the thousand they prevented. We only see the one that got through. We don't see the thousand they prevented. I said, you only see the times your prayers did not work like you wanted them to. You don't see the thousands they worked in ways you can't explain and understand. I said, I know how hurt you are based upon the decisions and actions of your child. I said, but you never know what your prayers may have prevented. You feel as though God has not answered your prayers. What I'm saying is that maybe God has answered your prayers and your prayers are the only thing that has kept your child alive. We have to trust. We have to trust. Pray boldly. Pray with confidence. Be like this Gentile woman and ask boldly, knowing that you too have a place at Christ's table. Pray with boldness. Pray knowing that you are loved, that you are called to love. Pray boldly. Let us pray.